I'm going to show you how we could make a game um, have a different time limit uh, for each individual level. So um, let's take a look at the example game that comes with MPAGD, Diamond Geezer, uh, and take a look at the um, screens there. So as you can see we have screens here starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's six screens, um, and we want to have a different time limit for each level. So the way we do that is we go to the restart screen event and take a look at that. Now this wasn't particularly easy to do in AGD. Um, you basically had to hard code the script so that uh, you were checking um, the screen variable. So you'd write something like if screen oops, oops, if screen equals zero, do something else. Else if screen equals one, do something else. Uh, and if you had more than a few screens, it would get very tiresome very quickly. But in MPAGD, it is so much simpler. So let's do that now. Right, the way we do that in MPAGD is we have read and data. So we can set up a data statement with um, a different time limit for each screen. So let's start the player off at uh, ooh, 65 seconds, 70, 75, 80, 85 and 90 seconds for each of the screens. So as you can see, we give the player a little more time as the game gets progressively more difficult to complete each screen. Now we then need to read that from the data. However, we need to make sure we're accessing the correct datum from that table. So um, the way we do that is we start off with a restore, which automatically points us to the beginning of the data statement. Uh, if you remember that from that instruction from uh, the old basic coding days, um, and then we need to skip the first few um, entries. So let's say we're on screen one, we need to skip the entry for screen zero, and the way we do that is we just um, check the screen number. If screen is greater than zero, then we uh, repeat screen. And then we just read off the entries that we want to skip. And then put an end if in there. And then what we're doing then is we're just skipping the entries that we don't need from the table and reading the, val uh, the value that we do into t at the end. Uh, and then, as you can see, we display seconds t. Now, that seconds clause, by the way, displays the, the value t as a timer. Uh, it displaces it as minutes and seconds rather than um, the actual value. So if we have a value of 70, for example, taken from that table, that would display as 1 colon 10 rather than 70, just to uh, make it easier. So that's all very good. So we've done that. So now let's just export our code. Geezer. So we create the assembler listing, and that's built there, as you can see. So now we clear, clear 24575. We import the binary, geezer.bin. This is Fuse, by the way. 24576 is the start for the Spectrum engine. You can change that in the code, but that's not a subject for this video. So let's import the code there, and then we just run it. There's our menu. We start the game. As you can see, we started off with 65 seconds. So let's clear this level. And then we start with 70 seconds, 1 minute and 10. So each individual level has its own time limit now. Let's just get to the third level. And 1.15. And that's how we have a different time limit for each screen. 